Okay, my name is Terry McGill. I work in the benefits department with JCPS. I've uh, been with JCPS for 11 years. So I will be going over your uh, benefits with you. Uh, how many people have uh, picked up their benefits bag? So everyone has their bag. Has anyone turned in their benefits packet yet? Okay, well that's good. All right, so I'll be going over your 2014-15 uh, benefits as a new hire. Employee benefits are available to all classified full-time employees working at least 20 hours per week. Our benefit plan equals or surpasses many other local employers. The effective date of your insurance plans, uh, your benefits go into effect on the first day of the second month following your hire date. For example, if you're hired August 15th, uh, the effective date of insurance is October 1st. So when are you all's hire dates? Do you all know? June the 9th, so your benefits will begin August 1. Yeah, August 1. Ours is July 1st. July 1st, so yours will begin September 1. Probation and your benefits. All classified employees serve a 90 working day probation. This probation affects your ability to use sick, personal, emergency, and vacation days if they apply. Days are accrued but not reflected on pay stub until after probation. Contact Human Resources for instructions if you are sick and can't work during your probation. Probation does not affect your insurance benefits. So if you're going to be sick during your probation, please tell your supervisor and, uh, whoops, sorry. and also contact the Leave Center because during your probation you're not allowed to use uh, any days. And I think if you miss up to 10 days on your probation, it could be grounds for uh, termination. And also uh, your benefits bags. They need to be turned in within 30 days of your hire day. This has nothing to do with your 90-day probation. So just remember your 90-day probation and your 30 days to turn in your benefits packet, they don't coincide with one another. They have nothing to do with one another, okay? JCPS board policy, GCBD, staff leaves and absences. The superintendent shall establish procedures for granting leaves of absence authorized by law board policy. An absent from duty not associated with an approved leave shall be treated as job abandonment regardless of intent to return to work and may result in termination. Contact Human Resources at these numbers if you need, a request, uh, if you need to request a leave of absence. As I stated before, if you're going to be off doing your probation, just make sure you contact uh, Human Resources to let them know. Uh, and then they will let you know whether it will be approved or, or uh, not approved. JCPS benefit counselors, for questions on your benefits, uh, you can call LaDonna Roser, Lori Stewart, or myself, Terry McGill. LaDonna handles the cons uh, custodians, uh, instructor threes, plant operators, Lori handles bus drivers, SNEDAs, security and maintenance, and I handle all nutrition services and instructional assistants and clerks. Uh, if MIS? MIS? I believe that would be LaDonna. LaDonna. Yeah. If not LaDonna, then it may be Lori. If it's not Lori, then it's probably me. <laughs> so it just narrows it down. <laughs> right. So, but I believe it's LaDonna. But uh, if LaDonna's not available, then one of the other counselors uh, can help you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you're at the Van Hoos, right? I'm sorry? you at the Van Hoos? Yes, we're at the Van Hoos. What administrators? Uh, that would be LaDonna. She handles all administrators. JCPS website, if you go to this website to access the JCPS website, from the home page you can click on employees and then scroll down the page and click on employee benefits information for brochures and explanations of our insurance offerings. You can also get information on participating providers, get addresses, customer service, phone numbers, etc. Don't forget to check out JCPS Plus at the bottom of the employee page. So if you go to if you go to our home page, this is what our home page looks like. And if you see up there the third tab, it says employees. If you click on that, it will bring you to this page. Down here is where ha where you have uh, employee benefits information. Um, everything that's in your benefits package that you receive, the bags Everything that's in there is on the JCPS website also. So if there's a form that you messed up or you just want more information on what we put in the bag, the information is out there. Uh, if you do mess up a form, 
uh, we also have it in the benefits department, so we can give you another one if, uh, if you mess it up. The JCPS Plus is also down here. Uh, this is where you go to find vendors that offer uh, JCPS uh, employees uh, discounts on different things, such as, uh, I think they have car washes out there, Great Wolf Lodge, if you're buying a home, uh, cell phones. Um, it's a lot of different things out there. And I think it's like 115 vendors. And all you have to do is show your pay stub or your, um, your JCPS ID. So if you want to know who those vendors are, you just go to the JCPS homepage and uh, this is what it looks like. We also have uh, employee self-service. Um, you go to, back to the homepage, the JCPS homepage, click on employees, then you click, click on quick clicks, click on employee self-service in the drop-down box, click log in in the upper right hand of the screen. Helpful hints, your username is your six-digit ID found on your pay advice, not your, social, not your uh, social security number. The first time you log in, use the last four digits of your SSN as your password. You will then be asked to, to change your password at that time. Choose employee self-service on the left of your screen. Again, you see that quick click drop down box? Yep. If, uh, when you drop that down, you'll see employee self-service. And employee self-service is where you can go to uh, find copies of your pay stub, your W-2s, um, what you claimed on your W-4. Uh, it's all your personal information. Benefits information used to be out there, but for whatever reason, my director has removed it. So if you want to know what you signed up for, you can always contact the, the benefits department. But the employee self-service is uh, very helpful if you want to just, you know, get a pay stub from three weeks ago uh, and you need it printed. Uh, you can go to employee self-service and uh, that will give you all your information. Approved leaves, these are the approved, leave, approved leaves. If you're less than 260 days, uh, 260 days employees, uh, this is how your holiday, sick leave, personal leave, emergency leave, and paid vacation will follow. And uh, it goes on to uh, 209 and 260. So depending on where you, where you are as far as the days that you work under your contract, this is how your uh, approved leaves will follow. Use your approved leaves wisely. Your sick days, your unused sick days accumulate from year to year. Your personal days, your unused personal days are converted to sick days for the next year. Insurance benefits are tied to active status and may be adversely affected depending on your FMLA eligibility. So if you don't use your sick days, uh, JCPS's fiscal year is July to July. So if you don't use all your sick days, your sick days will roll over. Your personal days will turn into uh, sick days. And then the new fiscal year, you will get another batch of sick days, and you'll also get another batch of three personal days. Your emergency days, you will have two out there, but that's only if um, you have some type of emergency, death, uh, natural disasters, anything like that. Now, do we need to notify you guys for rolling over, or it does automatically? It does it automatically. The flex day is, you get that, you can use that as your, uh, most people use it for their birthday. Um, if, um, if it's an election year for the president, then we don't get that flex day. We get that flex day for election day. Okay. And then, right, exactly. And then I think you have up to June 14th, I think it's flag day to use that day. And depending on how your birthday falls, you can either use it on. You can use it the day before Thanksgiving, um, your birthday, any, any other holiday that you know, that, that we don't have is an approved holiday off. So, so flex day, it's use it or lose it. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another reason to use days wisely, employees are paid at 30% of their current daily rate at retirement for unused sick days up to those earned in their 30th year of service credit with the retirement system. For classified employees, the other 70% goes toward the purchase of up to six months of additional service credit 
with the retirement system depending on the number of sick days accrued. The 70% purchase credit can result in either retiring earlier or a higher monthly annuity for the rest of your life. So if you don't, if you plan to retire from JCPS and you continue to let your sick days roll over and accumulate, you could be uh, paid a, a big amount at the end of your retirement of 25 to 27 years. Uh, I've, I've been, as I stated, I've been in with JCPS uh, for JC, what 11 years, and uh, we've done retirements, and we've seen people walk away with checks for forty, fifty thousand dollars, and uh, that's and that's thirty percent of their their sick days that they they had at the end of their retirement. So it's a good benefit if you decide to uh, to stay here and and do that. That was only thirty percent of it. Yeah. And it depends on their daily rate, so you know how much money they're making. Yeah, so it could be a nice check at the end of your retirement. I mean, you know, and there, there's been lower amounts, ten thousand. We've seen people walk away, away with five thousand. But uh, we're just trying to tell you that you know, if you save your sick days, don't use them just because you have them, uh, because you can uh, you can benefit from, from them in the long run. So you know, if you're sick, we understand that you do need to use them, but uh, you you know, you will get. Uh, paid a good amount at the end if you decide to retire with JCPS. And as it also stated, the other 70% will go toward uh, retiring earlier or a monthly higher annuity for the rest of your life. So it depends on how you want it done in the end. Yes? Is staying home for a sick child count for a sick day? Yes. Okay. Anytime you take off uh, for a sick child, you can use a sick day. More approved leaves, you have paid leaves, which are jury duty, military leave, uh, unpaid leaves are medical leave, adoption, convalescent leave, childbearing leave, education and training leave, union association leave, and military leave. It is crucial that you contact the Human Resources Department to, to formally request an approved leave. And that's what I stated to you all in the beginning. If you're going to be off, uh, especially doing your 90-day probation, make sure you please contact the, the Human Resources Department because we don't want you all to lose your job and just, you know, don't just stay home because you don't feel like going and don't call nobody because you don't feel like going. <laughs> so just make sure you contact someone if, uh, if you're gonna be off. Jury duty, notify your supervisor as soon as you receive your notice in the mail. Jurors call to an automated telephone scheduler each night. If you are not required to report for jury duty, the next day, you are expected to report to your assigned work location. The court will give you a statement showing each date you reported for jury duty. Bring that statement into your work location at the end of your scheduled service time to confirm your jury attendance. Jurors are paid $5 per day for their service plus $7.50 per day to cover parking, lunch, etc. When you return to work, Make a check payable to the treasurer of JCPS for $5 for each day that you reported for jury duty. Example, if you work eight days served by $5 equals $40. Give this check along with your time verification to the payroll person at your location. In return, you will receive your entire paycheck just like you had been at work the whole time. So this is a good benefit that not all employers uh, participate. Uh, most employers do not pay you if you go on jury duty. So if you do go on jury duty, um, you will, if you do this, you will get your paycheck as if you never missed any days uh, of work. And they don't take any days away from you? Or they no. No, not at all. And, uh, but if you're on your 90-day probation, uh, Linda has told me that uh, it's easy to get it waived if you're, you know, hopefully you won't get called during your 90-day probation because you don't want, you don't want to delay your uh, probation. But, um, but yeah, I heard if you contact them, uh, they will waive it and you can do it at another time. Your benefits, I'll be going over the state health insurance, the state flexible spending plans, your life insurance, your long-term disability, retirement plans, optional voluntary benefits, and the employee assistance program. The employee assistance program is a program where uh, JCPS offers to all its employees. Uh, you get up to three counseling visits. So if you feel you need to talk to someone regarding anything uh, with your life or something that's going on with your job, uh, you do have, uh, you can contact the employee assistance program. 
There should be a pamphlet in your optional packet uh, with that phone number and who to contact. It is confidential. Uh, you, when you make an appointment, you won't be sitting in the waiting room with another JCPS employee. Uh, and no one will ever know that you called, no one but you and the counselor. So it is uh, strictly confidential. Uh, so if you ever need that, it is there for you. Your new hire packets, uh, since you've all picked up your bags, uh, this is what it will be in the required packet. You must complete all forms in the required envelope of your new hire packet. And you must re complete the required packet regardless of whether you're not wanting anything. You have to complete everything in your required packet. And you have to turn it in in person. You can't put it through the mail. You can't put it through the pony. We want to see you. Just in case you don't have everything filled out, then we can either give you the form or let you know what's missing. And when you do come in, make sure you bring your bag with you because there may be some things uh, missing or that, you know, we need for you to f fill out. Yes? Now, um, the question I had was, we have 30 days to return those. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the general opening enrollment, it's going to be in October. Yes, and now I'll get to that. I miss my 30 days to return that. Or for personal reason, I want to just wait for that opening enrollment. Is that going to cause any issue for me not returning this or not? No, you still have to return the required packet regardless of whether you're going to wait until open enrollment to do that. Because there's life insurance information that we need from you. So you still have to turn that required packet in uh, regardless. And we will contact you. If you haven't turned it in within the 30 days, we will uh, contact you and give you, you know, maybe a couple of days to... Uh, <laughs> So if we miss the, if I don't sign up for the health insurance, mm -hmm. I still have a chance to sign up on the October one. Do an, op do an open enrollment. Mm -hmm. okay. Do we have to re-enroll in October? We don't know yet. Um, we haven't got that information yet. And that will probably come in maybe July, eh, August, September. We might get it in early September. But uh, we haven't got that information yet. But as soon as we get it, we will uh, get the information out to everyone in the district. So in your required packet, you have your health insurance application waiver form. You have your standard life insurance beneficiary form, your nationwide life insurance enrollment form and beneficiary form. And you also have the JCPS benefits enrollment change form. Uh, see optional envelope for information and prices. Uh, you also have your health insurance checklist, uh, initial each line and sign at the end of the form. So this is everything that will be in your required packet. I just want to point out to them, if you don't sign up for health insurance, they're going to waive you into a plan. They're going to pick a plan for you. And it may not be the one you want, and it might be expensive. So if you don't sign up for health insurance, they're going to waive you into a plan. They're going to put you in a plan. Yeah, if you don't enroll into, if you don't turn in your required packet and you don't enroll into a health insurance plan, they will default you to a plan that you probably don't want. It will be a single plan. I think that uh, default plan is like $6.50 a, a pay period. Uh, but um, Every two weeks? That's yes, two weeks. every pay period. That's too much. But anyway, so, but I need still to fill out that saying like, I don't want, and then put it back. That is correct. That's what it mean. If I don't do that, then they default to me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so if you don't fill out your health insurance packet or if you don't turn the required packet into us, the state will default you to an insurance plan that uh, you may want and you, you, you may not. It's, it's really up to you. But, you know, I would say, you know, choose the plan that you want that's best for you. And you do have that opportunity to do that. So, and that's why we give you 30 days to, to read over the information. And if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to contact the, the benefits counselor. So, you know, that's what we're there for. Um, just fill out as much as you can uh, in the required packet, your name, address, and all that stuff. And if you have questions, write your questions down. And when you bring in the packet, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. But fill out as much as you can as possible. Um, because you filling out as much as you can, uh, don't just bring the packet in and you haven't even looked at it. Because uh, that could take you 30 minutes to an hour to complete. If you have most of it filled out, it could take you maybe 10 to 20 minutes. If you have everything filled out, we'll just look over it, make sure you've signed everything, make sure you've selected uh, 
what you what you want and it could take you two to three minutes to get it to get in and out so just be aware that you know it depends on you uh, what you've done in the packet as to how long you'll be in our office filling out the paperwork and if you haven't filled out everything then we do have a room that we put you in to, to do it and we can't we can tell you about the plans but we can't make the decision for you the decision will be up to you okay All employee benefit packages must be completed and delivered to the risk management, risk management and benefits department, second floor, Van Hoos Education Center within 30 calendar days of your full-time hire date. Our office hours are Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30. Uh, just know that the doors are locked at 4.30, so if you're gonna come over and bring your, your benefits packet, just make sure you get there at least by, I would say, 4 or 4.15, because at 4.30 they do lock the doors, and once they're locked, you can't get in. And I wouldn't want you to make that trip out there for, for nothing. Because everybody says it's, it's hard to get to the van hoose, so. <laughs> but, uh, and if you have to turn your packet in and, um, you know, you work till 4.30, just tell your supervisor that, you know, you have to get this packet in. And that most of them understand that you have to get it over there. So uh, they will allow you to leave, you know, a little early to get over to the van hoose. Someone else can drop it off for you, correct? They can drop it off. But if something is missing, uh, all they can do is drop it off. Okay. If something's missing, we will contact you and let you know. <laughs> right. So they can drop it off for you, but we'll just take it and then we'll review it uh, later. We won't review it while they're there. Uh, but uh, if something's missing, we will contact you. Yeah. Your health insurance. The Commonwealth of Kentucky provides year-round coverage through the Kentucky Employees Health Plan. Review your KEHP handbook and choose a plan that best suits the needs of you and or your family. The application is inside the KEHP handbook. For questions on the health insurance, you can go to this KEHP website or you can call the state helpline at this 888 number. You can also contact us as benefits counselors if you have any questions. Uh, if we can't answer your questions, then we will refer you to the Department of Employee Insurance, which is uh, located in, in Frankfort, Kentucky. So uh, we are there to answer your questions, but you know, some, most times we can. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. <coughs> Sorry, okay. Uh, but yeah, we can answer your questions, uh, but if we can't, we will refer you to the Department of Employee Insurance in Frankfurt. And as I stated before, if you don't turn in your, your health insurance, or select that you want to waive it or anything, uh, the state will default you to uh, a health insurance plan. Waiving your health insurance coverage, you must complete the state form even if not taking the health insurance. If you wish to waive your coverage, complete section five of the application and sign the second page. If eligible, a waiver automatically enrolls you for the HRA, our, uh, HRA health reimbursement account amount of 175 per month. If you are not eligible for contribution, you must write not eligible in section five. So if you have health insurance someplace else, like your spouse carries you or you're in the military, or you just have health insurance someplace else and you don't, uh, other than the state, uh, you have the option to waive your health insurance and receive uh, a health reimbursement account. That account is not 175 on your check. You're not, you're not gonna get that on your check. What, what will happen is that it will, they will put it on a Humana Access card that looks like a visa. And you can use that for co-pays, prescriptions, uh, dental, vision, anything that's uh, medically necessary. Um, if your benefits begin uh, September 1, then you'll get 175 uh, a month for the remainder of the year. And uh, if your benefits begin September 1, Whatever that amount is from September to uh, December, you'll get that full amount on September 1. If you use it all on September 1 and you resign September 2nd or September 10th, you're not penalized uh, if, you, if you resign or something happens that you have to leave the JCPS. So you're not penalized. Uh, but uh, that, this option is available to you if you waive health insurance because you have health insurance someplace else. Or if you just don't want health insurance, you have this, you know, that's your choice. That's, that's, if that's what you want to do. Okay. 
Wellness information for complete details about the new health and wellness program sponsored by the Commonwealth of Kentucky and Humana Vitality, you can go to this website. Uh, I just went to a, a camp yesterday regarding the Humana Vitality. Uh, it was uh, held in Frankfort, Kentucky. And uh, they just want our, all our uh, Kentucky uh, members to be uh, a healthier you. So if you go to this website, if, and we have two living, the state has two living well plans uh, as far as health insurance. If you select the living well plan, you have to do a, a, a health assessment. I believe because of your hard date, you're not uh, required, it's not mandatory like it was before, uh, but they do want you to go out there to do a health assessment. If you do the, uh, if you select the living well plan, uh, and you can see all this in your, your health insurance handbook in your required packet. Um, if you select one of the living well plans and you do the health assessment, um, they will ask you questions as far as your weight, your sleeping habits, do you exercise, what type of things do you eat. It won't, whatever you answer will not prevent you from being on that plan. It just uh, gives you a guide and gives the state a guide as to how they can help you be a better you. And uh, as you, uh, when you enroll and do the health assessment, you also have the opportunity to earn bucks. Uh, to go shopping in, in, the, in their mall. And you can win gift cards, uh, cameras, hotel stays, um, tickets to, uh, to the movies. There's a lot of information out there. You can also uh, get five to 10% off at Walmart. You can receive a card. If you buy the certain, uh, the healthy foods that they have on their list, uh, you could receive five to 10% off at, at Walmart. So uh, I would say if you're, you know, if you want to be a better you or you're into exercising and, you know, doing the 10,000 steps a day, um, I would say go to this website because there's a lot of uh, resourceful information out there that, uh, that, could, uh, that could win you money and uh, make you a better you. Yes, did you have a question? What would you say the assessment takes? You go to Humana.com to do the, the, the health assessment. I'm sorry? Yeah, it's, it, it consists of the questions, like they ask you your age and uh, they just want to kind of get a, a guide on, on how you're living your life. And like I did the health assessment and I'm 48, but they told me I was 50. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just turned 48, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. But yeah, but when, when I did the health assessment and I answered all the questions, you know, they came up that I was 52, 54, or something like that. But, you know, and it's because of the way I answered the questions. And I mean, you answer them as truthfully as possible. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a drinker. You know, they want to know if you, uh, if you have diabetes in your family, if you're a smoker, you know, and things like that. So it's not in, any type of incriminating uh, Questions, you know, it's normally questions that your physician might ask. So, uh, but if you go to Humana.com or the KEHP website, there's a lot of information out there on the Living Well uh, Promise and, uh, and things you can do to, to uh, earn points and uh, gain rewards. I've had people that get, uh, they've, had, they've gained so many points from, you know, from exercising and eating right that, that, that you know, they bought iPads at, you know, 40 to 50% off. Uh, you know, they get a, you get a lot of benefit if you really, uh, if you want to improve your, your life and your, your health and all that. So, yeah, it's a good website to go to, to, to view that information. And then if you have any questions, you can contact us benefits counselors and uh, we can, we can kind of tell you what you, what you need. All right. Spending accounts. The state offers flexible spending accounts and health reimbursement accounts. For more information and a list of eligible and ineligible activities for FSAs and HRAs, you can go to the KEHP website and click on the 2014 flexible spending accounts and health reimbursement forms. Now, I did tell you about the HRA, which is the health uh, reimbursement account. Just remember that the health reimbursement account, the HRA, is state funded. That's the 175 that the state gives you if you waive your health insurance. The FSA is a flexible spending account of your money 
that you decide the amount that you want to put into a flexible spending account. So that money will come out of your check if you choose to enroll in an FSA. So that, that's the difference between the HRA and the FSA. The HRA is state funded, the FSA is your money going into account, an account. And if you happen to have an FSA and an HRA, and some people do, what they'll do is they will take the money off the FSA first because you will lose uh, that money at the end of the year if you don't use it. If you have the HRA and you continue to uh, enroll in it every year, the money that you have on December 31st will roll over to the next year. So also remember that your HRA funds will roll over, but your FSA funds you'll lose if you have any left over uh, come uh, December 31st. What about, now if I cancel that the HRA, if I cancel that, then, then they're going to reimburse me the whole money that I never use. I'm sorry? You say the money rollover for the next year. Uh huh. What about if I cancel? They're going to reimburse me all the money, right? That's unused for the H, I mean, the HRA. No. They're not going to reimburse anything. No. Right? no. So if if, if you cancel it, it will, it will stop the day that you cancel it. And you won't be able to use it for anything after that date. Right, if in October you sign up for a health insurance plan, then January 1 you will have the health insurance and you won't have the HRA. So let's go over the life insurance at no cost to you. The Commonwealth of Kentucky gives you a policy through nationwide life insurance. Uh, it's $20,000 uh, death benefit, term life. Uh, Jefferson County Public Schools gives you a policy through standard life. Uh, term life is equal to an, to an annual, two annual salary. Minimum is $10,000, maximum is $50,000. Both policies doubled if accidental death. So as I stated in your required packet, these uh, policies are in your required packet and we need those back from you. you uh, this lets you know that you get up to $70,000 in, um, in free life insurance at no charge to you. The $20,000 you have the option to select uh, additional on yourself and you also have uh, the option to select additional on your spouse or children. If you do opt to do the additional uh, on yourself or children just keep in mind that they will bill you at home for, for that. The Kentucky State Treasurer in, the, uh, in Frankfurt will bill you at home for, for that amount. It won't come out of your paycheck. So uh, just remember, if you do sign up for the optional on the, the nationwide uh, policy, uh, you will be billed at home for that. And it's worth, uh, if you don't enroll in anything other than that, you will just get the 20000 at no charge to you. And the same with the, uh, the standard life. Uh, this doesn't offer any additional. It just give, you can get it up to $50,000. So if you make $25,000 uh, a year, then your policy will be uh, twenty five. dollars And so these are in your required packet, and you have to turn those back into us. Beneficiary information. And this is the reason why we need uh, your beneficiary uh, information. Uh, please keep your beneficiary forms up to date at all times. You may change a beneficiary selection at any time by coming into the benefits department and showing a picture ID. Remember, a signed and dated beneficiary form becomes a legal document. Don't forget to change your beneficiary information with the retirement system as well. So just make sure uh, when you fill out your beneficiary forms that you have listed who you want listed in case of your death. Uh, if you need to change it, you do have to come in and show a picture ID. We, if you call us and want to know who you listed as your beneficiary, we won't give you that information over the phone. Uh, you have to come in and, and show an ID. We won't give you socials over the phone uh, due to HIPAA laws. Uh, we can't uh, do that. We, uh, just make sure you keep your beneficiaries up to date. I mean, spouses die, people break up, uh, people get mad at each other. Just, just make sure you, know, you keep them up to date. We did have one gentleman that worked for JCPS and he didn't turn in his required packet at all. And uh, he did end up uh, getting killed. And so 
he had no beneficiary listed. So, you know, we're talking to all these family members trying to figure out, you know, who's next to Ken. So it just gets real, you know, the, the waters get real muddy, you know, at that time. And, you know, and everybody is fighting, you know, for this money and trying to bury him and, you know, and do all that. So it, it, it makes it easier on us and it also makes it easier on your family if you have someone uh, listed as a beneficiary. Now, on your beneficiary forms, you do have a primary and contingent. Uh, you, you can list anyone you want um, as your beneficiary. It's up to you on who you want listed. Each section, the primary and the contingent, has to equal 100%. So if you have like three children and you want to make them all primary and get 33 or 34%, or you can break down the, the percentage however you want. You can break it to 50, 75, uh, 50, yeah, 50, 50, 75, 25, however you want to do it. But as long as it equals 100% in each section, then uh, yeah, that, that's how it will work out. And contingent is if the primary is deceased. So uh, you can list a contingent if you want. You don't have to. It's up to you. Yes? So for a person, I can list my spouse primary and all three of my kids together as contingent in case, like, so wife and I are in a car ride together. Right. So I'm going to split amongst kids. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And that's normally how people do it with, uh, with children. So, And if your children are under uh, 18, they, um, whoever their guardian is, that's who the money will most likely go to, or it will go into a trust until they're of age. So most times if you list a child that's under 18, I'm, I'm assuming that most people you know, may have a will that, uh, that indicates that you know, your life policies uh, to your children need to go into trust until they get a certain age. So, but just make sure your beneficiaries are always up to date. And normally, uh, since I've been with JCPS, I've seen where people Normally update or want to know who they listed for their beneficiaries. Uh, they normally do it during the summer because that's when they're off and then that's when they can sit down and, you know, and really uh, evaluate things uh, that, that's going on. Long-term disability. This policy provides financial protection in case of a disability. Uh, it's one year of employment for full-time hire day for eligibility. It pays 66 and two-thirds percent of basic annual salary based on medical eligibility. Employee must be absent for 45 consecutive work days or use all sick days, whichever is greater. It's subject to coordination with other benefits. You are automatically enrolled on your one-year anniversary. Contact the benefits department if you need to submit a claim. So this is a benefit that's automatic. It's not, you don't have, after you've reached your year with JCPS, you don't have to call us and say, I've, you know, I've been, with, uh, been here a year and now I want you, you all to know that I'm eligible for the long-term disability. Um, <laughs> that's not something that you have to do. Uh, if something should happen to you uh, and you're going to be out six months to a year because you're having some type of surgery or you know, something major has happened in your life, um, this policy, if you're approved for it, it will pay 66 and two-thirds of your uh, of your income. It doesn't pay your health insurance, but it will give you some type of income while you're off. So uh, you do have to be out at least 45 consecutive work days or have used up all your sick days. So whichever one uh, comes first. Um, so all you need to do is contact your benefits counselor and we will send you out an application for the long-term disability. Hopefully you'll never have to use it, but uh, it is there if, uh, if you have to. Now, short-term disability, if you're going to be off for six weeks, now that's something that's in your optional packet that you have to pay for yourself. So if you enroll in that, it's either through American Fidelity or Colonial, uh, that's something that you would have to pay for yourself. So just know the difference between the long-term and the short-term disability. County Employee ret Retirement System. Uh, this is uh, the retirement system that all classified employees uh, pay into. If you're hired after January 1, the retirement system has a new cash balance hybrid plan. If you want information on this plan and how it works, these are the two websites that you can go to. Uh, the employees contribute 6.0% before taxes. District contributes 17.67%, which is adjusted annually. You're vested after five years. As long as you do not receive a refund of your account, this entitles you to future benefits even if you are not currently contributing to the system. Uh, full retirement equals rule of 87. 
Member's age plus years of service credit must equal 87 and member must be a minimum of 57 years of age. Note, if you are a previous employee who has returned to employment, contact CERS for specific information on your retirement eligibility criteria. It may be different. Members do participate in Social Security and Medicare. So if you have any questions regarding the retirement system that you pay into, their number is up there, the 800. Um, us uh, benefits counselors, we know little bit, we know little about the retirement system and how it works. So if you call us and ask us a question, we may be able to help you, but most likely not, and we will refer you to the, the 800 number uh, if you pay into uh, the, this retirement system. It's not just 27 years on, it's, it's this rule of 87 thing for your eligible for retirement? Right, exactly, but uh, it must be a minimum of, you must be a minimum of 57 years of age. They want you to do 27 years to have a full retirement. But um, depending on your age and I guess when you came in and how many years you put in, you know, I guess that would all reflect on, um, on how your retirement will, will pay out. Do I have any uh, one that's uh, instructor three or that may pay into KTRS? which would be the Kentucky Teachers Retirement System. No one? Okay, well, if uh, you find out that you do pay into the Kentucky Teachers Retirement, this is their number, and this is for administrators and instructor threes and teachers. Uh, this is if you're in a position that requires a BA, uh, but I don't think we have anyone in here. Are you in a position that requires a BA? Yes. So you may pay into this KTRS. Okay, so uh, this is how your, uh, this is how you would contribute as a KTRS em, uh, employee, um, a, a KTRS member. Uh, you'll contribute 11.355% before taxes. State contributes 14.105%. Employees make no contribution to Social Security. Employees contribute to Medicare and you are vested after five years. So if you have any questions regarding your retirement system, you can contact that 800 number. No, I don't think the 87 rule applies in this one. <laughs> section 125 cafeteria plan. JCPS provides a section 125 cafeteria plan that provides substantial tax savings by allowing deductions for the plans below to be pre-taxed. You have your health insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, supplemental health insurance, accidental death and dismemberment insurance, cancer insurance, dependent care, medical, flexible spending account. So all these, if you select any of these, if you enroll in any of these, these will be uh, pre-tax. Optional voluntary benefits through payroll deduction, you have your auto home. These uh, benefits, uh, the information on these benefits are in your optional packet. Uh, you have your auto home, your cancer, your dental, legal, short-term disability, as I stated earlier, your supplemental health insurance, uh, vision insurance, whole life insurance, tax shelter annuity, supplemental term life insurance, uh, you, uh, you have the class act credit union. Deductions are taken pre-tax if qualified under the section 125 cafeteria plan. Deductions other than the health insurance can be taken one month in advance. Health insurance deductions are taken current month. So if your benefits begin September 1, your, health, your first health insurance deduction will be the first paycheck in September. If you sign up for dental or vision, those deductions will be taken in August. If you don't turn in your packet in time for us to take those deductions, those deductions that are taken a month in advance, we will sometimes have to double up on them. And uh, so if you sign up for dental, that's like $2 a, a pay period, um, and you don't turn your packet in until after those two uh, those two pay periods, we will, you might see $6 taken out because we're trying to catch you up on the two you missed the month before and then the current pay period. But then the next pay period, you will see the, just the $2 coming out for the dental. So just know that if you see an odd amount, that's because we're trying to catch you up and it depends on when you turn in your, your, uh, your benefits packet. And as, a, as I stated, uh, the health insurance is taken current. So if your benefits begin September 1, 
you will see your deduction for health insurance the first paycheck in September. And the tax sheltered annuities, uh, I know we told you you have 30 days to uh, enroll in those. Uh, in your benefits, you can enroll in your tax sheltered annuity at any time. So you don't have to wait 30 days. You just have to contact the provider or the representative and uh, that information is in your optional packet. But you can enroll in a, in a TSA at any time. It's not uh, time sensitive uh, within the 30 days. Open enrollment. Open enrollment is a time each year when you can make changes to your insurance plans. Open enrollment normally takes place in the fall, just after the start of school. You may choose new plans, add or drop dependents, or cancel your insurance. All open enrollment choices take effect on January 1 of the following year. Changes may be made outside of open enrollment only if there is a qualifying event. So as I stated uh, earlier, I think I mentioned something about open enrollment. No, open enrollment is normally held in October. Um, Last year it was held, it's normally held for two weeks, but last year it was held for the whole month of October. Um, but you all will know, you'll get information through your email, um, you'll get it through Monday Memo, your secretary at your site may mention it. Uh, just make sure that you, you know, you listen to the buzz that's going on uh, around October, uh, September, October, um, for the open enrollment and instructions on how, how to enroll if you want to uh, make changes. So, uh, and make sure you have access to your email because email is very important around open enrollment because my director sends out a lot of emails regarding open enrollment. And also know that during open enrollment, uh, the Commonwealth of Kentucky, that's who our insurance is through. It's just administered by Humana. They have their own website. JCPS has their own website for optional benefits such as dental and vision. So you're actually going to have to go to two websites during open enrollment. Normally with JCPS, if you're not making any changes, you don't have to do anything and it will just roll over. Uh, but with the state, we're not sure. Uh, most, last year it was mandatory that everyone enroll in their health insurance. But just remember that there will be two websites that you have to go to to enroll during open enrollment. You have your state website and you have your JCPS optional website. A lot of people think if they do their health insurance that they're doing their optional. No. A lot of people think if they're doing their optional, they're doing their health insurance and that, that's not the case. So just remember to read your emails, read Monday Memo, and uh, just make sure you, you, know, you listen to the buzz that's going on uh, around open enrollment. And we also will have a benefits fair sometime, I believe in October, over at the Kentucky Fair and Expo Center, uh, and you all are, are welcome to come. It is during the day, I believe it starts from seven to six, uh, and you can meet all the vendors, uh, uh, the Kentucky, uh, what is it? Kentucky Health em employees from, uh, from Frankfurt, they'll be there for the health insurance. And then we have all our vendors as far as dental vision and uh, the retirement systems will be there. So if you have any questions, you can come over there and talk to the individuals. They give out prizes and uh, give out little trinkets, toothbrushes, just stuff. Yeah, you can grab a little bag. But yeah, so just, just make sure you listen to the buzz uh, around September and October uh, when it comes to open enrollment. Your qualifying events are birth, death, divorce, marriage, spouse gains insurance through employment, spouse loses insurance through employment, Call your benefits counselor immediately since these are all our time sensitive transactions and require specific documentation. So if you get married and you want to add your spouse to your health insurance or your spouse has uh, added you to their health insurance, which means you can drop your health insurance with JCPS, just make sure you come in to make those changes. Uh, you have 30 days because they are time sensitive. You have 30 days to come in and make any changes with the qualifying event. You can contact the benefits counselors and we will tell you what, what, uh, what proper doc documentation we need in order to, uh, to process the qualifying event. So uh, as I stated, if you get married, if you get divorced, uh, if there's a death, just make sure you, you contact us if you have this person on your health insurance or if you just want to drop your health insurance because uh, you have health insurance someplace else or you know, if you have some type of uh, life changing event. When, um, what about children under age of 26? Is that, like, if they work somewhere and they get other health insurance and then for some reason they leave and their insurance ends, is that 
Right. Like, that's that's a qualifying event up until they're 26. So you can, you know, that that would apply to them up until they're 26, and they would just need to bring us a letter from their employer stating the effective date, coverage ended, and their name needs to be in the letter. So, and all children can be covered up to 26. Escrow, all less than 260 day employees have money escrow from each paycheck throughout the school year to help ensure they receive equal paychecks each pay period. Employees who are hired after the beginning of the school year may not have enough money escrow to pay them through the entire summer, depending on their hire date. If you have questions regarding your escrow, contact the payroll de department at this number. And we have Sarita Clarkson, she'll be coming up to speak to you. She's from payroll and she'll, she'll be coming up to speak to you uh, about uh, escrow. Summer insurance premiums, deductions will be taken as long as there are paychecks to support them. New employees may be responsible for submitting deductions directly to the vendors if their summer paychecks do not extend through the entire summer. This will not apply to you, so don't, yeah, don't worry about this. Questions, thanks for your attention and your interest and welcome to JCPS. Are there any questions? Uh, I have one in the, the like, official packet that you gotta fill out for the help. Uh -huh. I just noticed, I was looking at it last night, and so in the column at the very right where it says the employee contribution, there's a price. And so I'm assuming that's what you're going to see deducted on the paycheck. Right. But above that it says all employee contributions are per month, per, per, per employee per month. So it's about weekly, half of that is full? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's a monthly amount in the book. And then you just divide it into two.